What's up? What's up? Welcome back to 24th and Park. I'm John Olangi here with Eddie Razo. What's up, Eddie? Good, John. I mean, it's been a we've been a, on a little three week break. I think it was. I know you were on vacation. And so much has happened in those three weeks, though. <laughs> yeah, bro. It's it's been a lot, uh, a lot to cover. We got a lot to get into. Uh, again, uh, thank you all for for listening to the, our first three episodes. Um, yeah, we've been, you know, I took a little vacation, a little much needed vacation. I actually came out uh, to your to your coast on the West Coast. I was in L.A. for about a week and uh, we hung out, man. And uh, it was cool. I appreciate you for putting me on authentic street tacos. It was it was very necessary for me to, to kind of get a vibe of what L.A. is really like, you know, not the Hollywood and Beverly Hills. I went to. Salt. Yeah, not the tourist, not the tourist. I went, I went and did all that, but I really wanted to get like the authentic L.A. vibe. And I appreciate you for putting me on, man, on those tacos. They were they were they were amazing. <laughs> yeah, no, that's. I think Southern California. I know Texas will have beef with this, but um, I, I always <laughs> believe that Southern California and California in general does the best tacos. But that's always the the beef we have within like the Mexican community is like which state has the best tacos, and it's always it's always Texas and, and California that be going at it. I know there's Arizona. We'll try to chime in, maybe New Mexico, but I. I I still think California has the best tacos. Yeah, for sure. Nah, I look, I don't doubt that at all, man. It was <laughs> it was a good time, man. I'm definitely come back out there, man. It was a good time. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and get into uh, get into to the show. Uh, like I said, we haven't, you know, it's, it's been about three weeks. Uh, we want to get caught up on on the kits, man. The, the classic kits that we've all been waiting on, right? Like we've been talking about these kits for a while. The the classic with the pin with the stripes on the side yeah. with the um, classic Nike logo with the collar. A lot of people don't really like collar um, collar kits. I think it works with that yeah. kit in particular. Uh, yeah. Like, so, you know, did it come out how you wanted it? Was it everything what you imagined? Yeah, it was just as I imagined. I, for me, collars on kits are either hit or miss. Sometimes they look, it, it complements it well, and then other times it's like, you know, like the Liverpool last year, I, you know, just to throw in an example, I really wasn't a fan of that kit, just because the collar for me, just, it didn't seem like it went well with, with the design, but on, on this PSG kit, yeah, definitely, especially if you're going throwback, yeah, you you try to, you know, add a, add a, add a collar and, and see how it looks, but yeah, the, the that logo and that kit, everything, like I'm I'm spending cash on that. <laughs> For real. Now, I definitely I definitely already ordered mine. Uh it's funny like the that day, I think there was a match going on. I forget what match it was. Uh when they released the kits and we all like tried to <laughs> get the get the jersey. And I got an email like, "Yo, yeah. the, the kits are available." Went on to get them, and I believe we crashed the the, the PSG store. The PSG. Yeah, I think store if I'm not mistaken, Ed was tweeting that that he was not able like that day to, you know, that yeah. the, the the website was crashed and there's no way for him to order. And I think Mark tweeted that he was able to get his. So it was it was a f- funny afternoon there, seeing how people were able to you know order, and then the there was the other side that you know the website was crashing. Yeah, I ended up getting it though, but I think that that right there speaks to the demand of not just any jersey it's that one in particular right like we've been waiting on that one and as soon as it came out we wanted to go get it and you know look we that was that's just what happens when people you know when 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 a jersey is in demand and uh i definitely and i was i was on the fence on who to get you know i like i like to get the names of the players and all that Uh, i went with verati you Mm -hmm. know that's my guy I have most of, you know, most of my other favorite PSG players, but Verratti has been missing. Uh, so I went ahead and, and, and got that one. I think Marquinhos is next. Yeah. Me. Yeah. So I definitely had to grab that. So and then yesterday, well, I think, yeah, we had a match yesterday. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yesterday, we're recording on Sunday on the September 29th. Uh, yesterday's match against uh, Bordeaux. Yeah, it was Bordeaux. Uh, they they wore the 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 creamsicle <laughs> kits yeah. is what people are calling them because it's like very not pleasing to the eye on the television but they're the infrared Jordan kits that they came out with this year 
Um, and and still, you know, they're conceptually, it's a dope, it's a dope concept, it's a dope yeah. idea, and but it's just on the TV screen. It doesn't look red; it looks orange. Mm-hmm. And you know, like I'm, you know, it don't make it don't bother me. But it's like that's I see people. I've I've read people nitpicking about that. How you feel about them? <laughs> people have too much time. If that's <laughs> what they're nitpicking. Like, yeah, that's like, what I think. <laughs> it's it's just a jersey. It's like, yeah. you know. It's not. It's. I, I'm not a fan of these like this creamsicle template that Nike has because it's the same creamsicle that like they've done with Inter. Like Inter has this like aqua creamsicle looking jersey or whatever, and I'm not sure if there's. I know there's other clubs that I don't. Not the top of my head. I, I'm not. I don't know, but I know there's other ones because usually what Nike does, they have one template and then they'll apply it to like multiple clubs. So. I know there's probably another club with the creamsicle looking jersey, but to me, it's it looks nice. It's good. I mean, I'll probably buy it maybe towards the end of the year, where you know when Nike cuts off or or gives like discounts on on yeah, when you know they come the, down a little bit on those yeah. prices, man. Yeah, <laughs> so so uh, I, I that's how I usually buy my jersey. So I usually just wait till unless I really really want it, I'll wait like towards the end of the season. That's when. You know, they drop twenty bucks on it, and they'll just be like maybe anywhere between eighty and a hundred dollars, and you know, bam, save some cash. So yeah, for sure. So how are you? No, how are you feeling? Like, what? What do you? Are you? Is it like for you? Is it a big deal how they come off on on TV? Um, not really, cause it's like, yeah. like you said, first of all, it's just a, it's just a jersey. They're gonna wear. It. it doesn't influence how they play. Although, um, I'm with Gim, the black. PSG Jordans from last year's Champions League are bad luck. Never wear those things again, <laughs> right? Like you know, superficial in that sense. But the, like, they're the they're with like, the what is it? The jerseys that we lost six one. Those two are the ones we must never yeah. speak of or ever. talk about ever again. <laughs> ever, 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 never wear those again for real. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, aesthetic again. It's like like the their Jordan fives right like and i'm and i'm a big jordan fan so all the shoes have a concept there's the jordan 1 to 17 or whatever but the jordan fives a popular shoe that they have is the infrared fives and there's like a really deep red um you know in person that you can see like the deep red but on tv it looks like a little bit orange or like but like what does that matter <laughs> you know what i mean like what what does that do like you know they're they're phenomenal jerseys, uh, just again conceptually, but you know they might look a little different on TV. But again, it's it's a non-issue, as is most things that people complain about. So it's all good. <laughs> so we uh, let's let's go ahead and move on to the next topic. We wanted to talk about some 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 league and stuff, particularly about the the TV production and and where we watch. Uh, PSG matches and you know most of us here in, in the U.S. watch it on being sports people in, in France you know watch it on Canal and, and their and their uh, their networks and I was watching and I tweeted this yesterday I was watching uh, the Madrid Derby and they showed a heat map of I believe it was Casemiro and and someone else and it was like a live heat map. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Like while the player, like they circled the player, and then the little circle followed the player wherever he went, and then they showed his heat map of everywhere he was at. And I was like, and I and I've seen it before, but I never really like paid attention to notice what what that was. And I'm like, yo, why is it only La Liga, or why are they the only ones who are privy to this technology, right? Yeah, because you know, uh, Liga plays here last season, Serie A. Um, the Turkish league plays on uh, they're they're showed on 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 um on being sports and then um Mark our our colleague Mark Damon he tweeted you know he he brought up a valid point like is it is it a league on thing or is it um a being sports thing or is it La Liga's production that's doing those extracurricular things and you know it's a good point but it's like they 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 did advertisement during um uh, during that match and the being sports commentators were the ones who were narrating the advertisement there was an advertisement for yeah. geico 
I've never seen an advertisement for Geico during any PSG matches. And then during like the, the Express halftime show, they do all of those fancy technology features and, and all those stuff where like they have the circle that follows the yeah. players and they create diagrams and all that fancy stuff. So being sports has the capability to do it. And it just it's just not there for league and matches. And, I, and I'm, you know, kind of interested to get your point on that, like. Is, is league M behind like are they even interested in doing any features like that or is that just something that we personally want but we'll never get i think mark has a point i think maybe that's a, a la liga production because bn sports gets the feed from la liga that's why you see the 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 sports ticker like the the the, the tracker it's always looks different when you look at la liga matches and and league on and to me the advertisement it probably has to do with the advertisers saying, hey, we want our advertisement during these particular matches. It has to be, you know, advertisers usually have a say where they, you know, because they're paying for the advertisement. They probably want to say, hey, we want it during Real Madrid matches because we see that X amount of people watch these matches despite them being poor form or whatever. They're still putting eyeballs on the TV. So we want to put our advertisement during this slot when they play so i think that might explain it a little bit but i mean we saw over the summer Ligon be really really behind and with the times because when they did their quote-unquote usa tour we saw the turnout for all that stuff and then what for the people who did turn you know were able to go to that match not much was offered for them for for going it was it felt like it was like last minute rushing and i just don't know i think maybe they don't care about that stuff maybe they don't see the value in it but i just feel like whoever whoever's in charge of that of that league i think they're i don't know i just i I think they're just like i said they're not in touch with what you know the younger 20 to 35 age range wants to see because a lot of people i mean if being sports was to show a heat map of 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 ghana you'd see you, you know mm. it, it, he'd be all over the place oh, but, be red. <laughs> but i mean it's just probably Leon. they probably don't see a value in it or i just don't know that feel like they're just i mean la liga is probably like two or three steps ahead of what you know they should be but we'll see what happens yeah, you bring a you bring up a good point, and you know I think it's 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 fair to to keep in mind. Again, Ligue 1 is a French league, uh, but even now, as I say that, <laughs> La Liga is a Sp- is a Spanish league. So, you know, and in, and in, in, it's about catering to the American fans, right? And, and I think yeah. that's 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 the focal point, right? And I think yeah, and I, if I'm not mistaken, Spain is going to be playing in the U.S. Right. Yeah, right. I, I saw. Remember they I wanted to they wanted to start playing La Liga matches in in like yeah. Florida and Miami and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. they they're they're thinking they're trying to get a part of that you know American money pie while Liga. I'm not sure what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, well they they tried with the EA games and in the summer with like middle table Liga teams and that didn't really work out the way they did. Uh, the, the way that they they would have wanted it to, but you know, again, like I, I'm pretty sure if you watched them, I, I don't know, I've never watched the PSG match on on Canal Sports or any of the other French uh, French networks. I don't know if they do anything like that, but you know, it's it would it would be cool. I mean, so again, we've kind of talked about this before a little bit, but like, is there any other viable option? that would cater to American fans other than being sports. You know, a lot, a lot of people tweeted me when I tweeted that out, you know, brought up Amazon Prime, uh, Hulu, Yahoo Sports, and, you know, th- those, those, most of those places are paywalls. Right? Yeah. But being sports is kind of a paywall, too, because it's not on, like, your your normal TV package. Yeah. I. It's all going to come down to money, and I don't know. Amazon's the only one where maybe you could see it having – the 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 cash to to pay for like an exclusive tv deal or i don't know it might get tricky you know french politics are not going to allow for psg to to do something like that i think it's going to be league 
and I'm not sure what the league wants in the U.S., but I don't know. I mean, I, they're they're slowly coming. You know, Uber Eats, Uber Eats. I, that's an American company, right? Yeah. You know, they that's the sponsor for the league right now. So it's like you know they 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 can they can do it. Like, they're it's, they're, it's not, they're slowly being dragged into the 21st century. Yeah, it's a very slow drag though. And I and I was and I was saying, man, like just to just to stick on that Amazon Prime, like there needs to be a PSG documentary, like on yeah. Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, like and this is like the perfect year to do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Just with the Neymar saga transferring from the summer into the season, the Mbappe injuries, bringing in a, a player uh, with with Icardi's you know background and and, and yeah. the things that go around about him and his wife and the whole Argentina thing and we talked about that when I was in LA with you and you kind of broke down that 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 history about Accardi and his wife and how it kind of plays a role into why he doesn't play for the Argentina national team I wasn't privy to this information I just thought people hated him because he was like braggadocious or whatever I was like the dude is a lethal striker like why don't people like him and you you kind of enlighten me on that situation, but I think this year would be the year yeah. if they were to, be, you know, document in this season because it's very fascinating. It's very dramatic, very very dramatic. I mean, look, uh, when it comes to like streaming stuff, BN Sports isn't. It, they can be bad at it just because we've they have all had. Yeah, we've had our issues with the streaming, but when it comes to the the pundits. Compared to ESPN FC, they're not that bad. Like they'll say some dumb stuff, but it's not ESPN ESPN FC levels bad. Like I mean, that's I the bar. Agree. That's the bar. <laughs> that's there. the bar. I mean, I do enjoy <laughs> Ray Hudson calling PSG matches when he gets the chance, just because he adds that that sure. enthusiasm. Because I mean, I, we we just saw. I I think I showed you the video of uh, Atletico tying with um Juve that that two two draw in the stoppage time and. Yeah. I mean, if that was Ray Hudson calling that, it would have been like he would have been losing his mind. Instead, you get someone who's like the guy. The Atletico just scored something, you know, just tied the game with in stoppage time, and it's just a casual, and they tie the match, and right. you know, that <laughs> right. British, and it's just like, dude, it's something extraordinary just happening. You gotta like you didn't you match know. the intensity, yeah, yeah, and so, uh, and then you know, and. And um, you know what's his name? Andres Cordero. He does a really good. Job. I like. I, I do like the I like commentators. Him. He's smart. Yeah, and I like Ray Hudson. So I did, and then they're starting to bring around some of the real. Um, uh, what's the Kylie? I forgot her last name. Though. She's good too. I've yeah. Been and she's it's just I don't want to leave to go to like where TNT has basketball players <laughs> as pundits and and Stu Holden or whoever you know they Steve it's just Dash. Like, yeah Tim I don't Howard. just be yeah yeah like they can get all the money but man if that's what they have or ESPN FC like it's like yeah do you really I don't I don't want that like yeah being sports <laughs> has their issues but it's not it's not it's exclusive now like it's not so hard to grab being sports like I use Fubo TV. I only pay 18 bucks a month, and that comes with just because that comes with the Univision channel. So, um, for me, it's worth paying 18 bucks a month because I get BN and the 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 Spanish football channel. So for me, it's it's not even that bad. Uh, so it's not it's not as bad as it used to be. Now that there's a lot of more streaming services, a lot. I know um, Sling TV now has Fubo. I mean, not Fubo has BN Sports. So yeah, they, yeah Sling has they yeah. Been- had uh, being sports. well, they had it, they lost it, but then they got it back. So okay, I didn't know. That. Yeah. Okay. So so that is that. Like it's not as hard as it is because, like I said, there's so many streaming services that you can get it, and I just I, I'm looking at the other options. I don't know what Amazon, what kind of like production they would do because I do like have some type of good pregame, you know, to the matches and then postgame. So I like I do like seeing that, but for right now it's just I don't know. Like I look at the other options, like ESPN. I don't want to deal with seeing those ESPN FC guys. Like I just don't <laughs> want to see any Craig of them. Burley will be called oh, PSG. That He'll, I, ever, <laughs> I think he was the one that said Marquinhos isn't all that good. No, it was but, Stevie Nickel. Oh yeah, it's, what, a, what a douchebag, bro. 
It's like what 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 do y'all watch? Like what what do you see? It's 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 it's, it's nuts. And yeah. um and I was looking at um uh Frank LaBeouf. I think he's like an actor, a French. And uh I think I believe Ed wrote a phenomenal piece about like French uh like you know it should is it is it disrespect for that Neymar doesn't speak French or something like that and the guy was saying how it's disrespectful to the country and all that. like bro the dude's balling out none of that matters cuz if it yeah. doesn't you know what I mean like it it, it doesn't me, affect on it, pitch it has it has to do with I don't want to put it this way but Neymar is like a hired mercenary cuz <laughs> he's a mercenary for hire oh, yeah. and he just doesn't have a connection with with Paris and France and I think that's what it goes into that that's what takes part into a player trying to learn the language because or you know the language of the the country he's playing in because you'll see um you know Thiago Silva is not, I think he's a French citizen now he think he got yeah, yeah. citizen him and his family and, yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously I think there's a video of um Angel de Maria trying to teach or his daughter's trying to teach him French and it all just depends on the player like if he feels that connection with the city the country then he'll do his best but you know there's players that hey i'm just here to play like i'm getting paid to play and that's it you know and maybe that's neymar i think there is some that he i don't know how true this is but i did see some tweets that he does know french it's just he doesn't feel comfortable speaking french and i i relate that to to like japanese baseball players who come play in the the united states they probably know english but they don't want what they're saying to be taken out of context or you know there's there's pundit or there's journalists who will take stuff out of context in France, so I don't want to. He maybe doesn't want to get his message misinterpreted, so he'll use either speaking Portuguese or maybe hire a, a translator. And that's what some of the Japanese baseball players, if it's if it's like a really big press conference that they're doing, they'll more than likely. And some of the Dominican players too, they'll say, "Hey, well, we want an interpreter because we don't want English is our second language. We don't want what we're saying to be misinterpreted by anybody." So. I don't that's not for me it's not a big deal like I said if a player feels that connection to the country they'll they'll seek and try to learn the language and and then maybe take that extra step and try to be a citizen yeah yeah no you're right I think that there is there is an intimidating factor uh with that language barrier because you know I'm I'm a person who speaks three languages and I'm not as fluent as in French as I would like to be and there's some stuff. There's some stuff when I'm talking to my family members who speak French. It's like, if I'm not sure of what to say, I'm not gonna say it because of what you say. I don't want it to be misinterpreted or misconstrued to be something else. So you know, there is that. But I, I believe Neymar and Di Maria, they understand French, you know, enough to know what someone is saying because they hear it every day. They just maybe don't know how to articulate as well as they should. But mm-hmm. you know, just still going back to. All of the ESPN pundits played in Premier League, and, and Ed brought it, brought this up in his piece, and I thought this was the most poignant uh, thing that he brought up was most of those guys played in England. They speak English, right? So you never mm-hmm. had to go to another country to learn a different language. So how can you tell somebody else about a situation that you've never been in? Yeah. And if you look at the entire uh, England English international squad, Literally all, all of all, them except for Jaden Sancho play in the in the Premier now, League except now, uh, for Perry and Trippier. Yeah, yeah, those are Sancho and Trippier are the only ones that yeah, like play. That's, and I, and I believe that one of the biggest and Germans that Germans is, Germans are like really educated in English, so it's not like you know Sancho right. is like playing in France where it's French. You know, Germans are like known for knowing multiple languages, and right. so uh, he's still in a comfortable situation trippier on the other exactly. hand you know he does yeah, Spain he probably, yeah yeah no exactly because trap and draxler they spoke perfect english and, and care they they speak good english so you're, you're right about that and then i come i commend kieran trippier for for making that move because it's like yo a lot of those english players love to stay in the premier league so him going to spain and atletico for for that matter is and I commend him for it because not only is he taking on a new challenge, but he's got to learn a new language, and so it's like, yo, you can't. Yeah, and his manager to... is Argentinian. He speaks Spanish, so it's not like, oh, right. it's, it's, a, it's his manager knows English, you know? Right. There's not a smooth transition there, right? So it's like, yeah. So yeah, that I thought that was kind of where it's like, yeah, you can't really, you can't really talk about him when you've never really ventured out 
either. So, so yeah, yeah that so means enough. it means we don't want ESPN to be the league on yes, TV yeah, provider yes, yes, or TV. Yes, yes. It's a, it's a du- it's a double edged sword. It's like eh, yeah, we'll take the production, but we don't really want the commentators. It's yeah, so it's yeah. a double edged sword. It's gonna be we'll see what if they are if again if they're even thinking about doing something different. So we'll see what happens with that. FIFA, FIFA 20 just dropped, I believe, on the 20. I forget what day. It just it came yeah, it was out. this past week. Okay, this past week. I, <laughs> if, if you ask my friends, they'll tell you like I, I'll get an Xbox. Like I'll go to the pawn shop and get an Xbox just to get FIFA. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like. I'm not interested in playing like other video games like that. It's just I don't have time. But I will play FIFA this year. Uh, a lot of the topics that came up about the game was the big one was Juve with uh, them with their image rights and not one and they're having their exclusive rights with it's just called PES. I don't yeah. even know what that stands for. Player, uh, what is uh, I forgot. I, I gotta look that up. But but yeah, they're now exclusively on PES right, so for the in, future. In FIFA, in FIFA, they're called Calcio something else. And the UVA kit is different and all that stuff. And and, I, and you just, uh, before we started uh, recording, you were telling me it was two other teams who are in the same particular Yeah. So first it's uh, Pro Evolution Soccer is the name of the game. So oh. it's PES and then the year. But, um, it's yeah. not better than FIFA, by the way, but that's another discussion. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, UVA isn't the only one. You have um, in Argentina, you have Boca Juniors and River Plate. I know River Plate's gonna be called Nunez FC. Mm. So those 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 two <laughs> other clubs, and they're really big clubs. So like maybe people don't follow them, but like in terms of Latin America, those two are the biggest, uh, along with maybe a Flamingo. But right. those two are the biggest clubs in Latin America. You t- you talk to anybody who speaks Spanish first, automatically they'll when you say Boca and River. They don't have to be Argentinian. They'll they'll automatically know what you're talking about. So those to have those two clubs and U of A, that's that's a big loss. Not a, yeah, I think it's a big loss for it's significant. For, enough. Yeah, it's significant enough for other clubs might think, hey, can we get a piece of that pie? You know, right. for, for those image rights. So yeah, it takes. It looks like FIFA is taking a bit of a you know a, a, a bit of a blow here. Yeah, I think I think they'll be all right. If as long as like the Real Madrids and the Barcelonas and the Manchester United, P- even PSGs, you know, once like if it becomes a trend, then they might be in trouble. But you know, but like like you said, with River Boca and, and Juve, that's that, again that's significant enough. But I think the gameplay, you know, that I can speak for someone who's played both, uh, the 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 from graphics, the gameplay, and, and all of that stuff is just much more fluid. FIFA is to play soccer on the video game. It's just it's very very authentic and and, and the dribbling and you know and and there's a lot of memes and clips of glitches because it's a video game. You know when when you you see the videos online where like the ball rolls (laughs) past the keeper and past the defenders and it just goes in. It's like you know that's a glitch and it happens in video games. That's but overall the gameplay is just much more much better and and so for p for pes knowing this the only leverage they have is to give these teams a lot, lot of money to exclusively be on their video games yeah. and that's just the game the game is the game and um but like i said i think fifa is going to be all right it's just going to be you know if, if, if one of the other big dogs goes over there then we can start seeing a shift in there but i don't i don't but me personally I don't believe it's going to happen. Yeah, it, FIFA should be all right, but it should be like a, a wake up call to get their shit together because a lot of people, uh, a good majority of the, of the people still feel like it's just same graphics, same everything with just yeah. diff- upgraded rosters. Yeah, and, and that's that's across the board with EA games. Yeah. And, and I, I, was, I used to buy Madden with the American football a lot, and I stopped buying it because it's like you're not changing anything except for the roster updates and like a yeah. cool feature here and there but overall you're not you know it's like storylines you know we have writers and, and and producers like give us give us a, a real life scenario of a player leaving their hotel apartment going to the game right like different different things that make people want to continue to play the game and yeah. and um there's um in modern warfare it's you know the army 
Call of Duty is a very yeah. popular video game. Uh, they their new release, they're gonna do a crossover where if even if you have a X, whether you have an Xbox or a PlayStation, you'll be able to play together. So I think that's like what what they're doing is is that's a, that's a good thing to mm-hmm. do. That's how you keep people within your game. You you, you um you know because if you have an Xbox, you only play with people who have an Xbox. Now you can play your friends who have a PlayStation who talk shit and say, yeah. oh, our console is better. And now yeah. that, that kind of brings it brings it in. So if FIFA and some of these sports games can start doing that, that'd be another way for them to get their shit together, like you were saying. But otherwise. Again, I don't think it's it's a big deal, but yes, it's certainly a wake up call for him. I'll let you take this one. Uh, you brought this up. Well, it's the craziest transfer rumor. Yeah, I mean, you you were you were in LA. You saw Zlatan play for the Galaxy this weekend. Um, yeah. Yeah. He he's something. <laughs> he's uh, I mean, he's been in the I mean, he's been in what three um, two or three years already with the Galaxy and MLS. Yeah. yeah, so you know he's he's the, and he's even taking shots at MLS, saying you know just the playoff format that it doesn't matter where you, it doesn't matter how you're playing if if as long as you get into the playoffs then that's okay for everybody <laughs> there. So you know he was taking shots at the league. I don't know. There's this this crazy rumor that I saw. I'm not sure how true it is. But I got to look at his contract just to see. But there was like a crazy rumor that he might entertain the the idea of going to South America to play with Boca Juniors. And that that's that wow. that's probably one of the like those those crazy rumors you see. And it's just like it's 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 just wild to think. Uh, I mean, it, it's we kind of saw uh, this summer there was Daniel DeRossi. He was you know, going to retire, but then he said, you know what, I want to play for Boca, I want to play in that Libertadores, and I think Libertadores is the second biggest tournament or trophy that a soccer player can win behind, you know, obviously the Champions League, I hold the Libertadores in much higher regard than the Europa League, just because a Europa League matchup isn't going to be played at at the Bernabeu, so, you know, which was the Libertadores, and so... I don't know. It's just I just wanted to bring it up just because Zlatan is. We all, as PSG supporters, love Zlatan, and we always keep track of where he plays, what he does. You know, to an extent, some of us do. So you know, I just wanted to bring that up just because I saw it a few days ago, and then I saw it today right now again that they're denying it. They said that they've not been contacted by them, but I'm pretty sure, you know, footballing wise. Zlatan would rather be somewhere else. Uh, Zlatan himself, as a person, probably loves LA, but the footballer in himself probably doesn't really like playing in the United States, just because, you know, he's taking shots at the league. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really fascinating to see how he's kind of he's sunning everybody, like from the league to his own teammates. And like you said, I was at the match. I, I checked out the match uh, this past Saturday. Uh, they were playing the Montreal Impact, I believe they're called. Yeah. And um, and he like did whatever the hell he wanted, bro. And you know, at PSG and and at Manchester United, like he has enough respect for the club where you know Zlatan had the freedom to do his thing, but it was still within the system, within Laurent Blanc's the system, within uh, I believe he was under Mourinho, correct? Yeah, yeah, that's when they yeah, won so the Europa he, League. You know, it was. It was within it was within that system, but bro, like he's not tracking back at all. Like he's, you know what I mean? Like he's literally the forward, and he'll just chill up there. And then if one of the one of the midfielders or the other wingers makes a terrible pass, like there's like three instances that I counted where he's like just cussing them out and just like yo, like what are you doing, bro? Like pass the ball right here. Like he's like he like he he doesn't respect the league. He certainly doesn't respect his players, but that's that's Latan. But he's gonna give you goals, right? So you gotta take the good with the bad. Like it's not even not even bad. It's just like yo, that's just his energy. That's how he gives mm-hmm. it up. So like I, I I wouldn't. The only reason I would say he wouldn't go there is because of the same reason. The same thing I kind of just said is I don't think he has the 
Uh, I think he's he's certainly older. I don't think he has the uh, the mileage anymore. I think he's he's slowing down a lot. And, yeah, and, and he that wouldn't might be, he he wouldn't be able to get no, away with that. You know, if no, you've seen no. Bo- Boca fans, they're they're rabid. Yeah, they're, they're not gonna wild. let that. Slide. <laughs> they're not gonna let that yeah. slide. Yeah. No, they're not. And and he and and then just physically, he doesn't have it in him. To, to 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 play the way he was playing, you know, he can get away with that in MLS and with the Galaxy and him being in LA and him being the superstar that he is. But you're not about to go to Boca with this rich history in football and this these these crazy fans. Like you're not just that's just not gonna happen. So I think I, I think he's gonna stay put where he is uh, and kind of milk milk it out and, and then probably retire but yeah and that, that was the biggest thing i noticed like he was doing whatever he wanted but at the same time i believe he was doing that because he's just not physically able to go back and forth and then like he it's just not him he literally yeah. just stays in the box waits for someone to play him the ball and and, and he actually scored in the game it was like a, a, a rebound like a ricochet off a player and he scored in the, in the match and and they won but yeah that, that I don't I don't think he's gonna go because he 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 doesn't he's not gonna be able to keep up with them. Yeah. You know what, I I kind of want to just last last thing on this. It's gonna be weird that Zlatan's not gonna be able to win like a major. I mean I know he won Europa League, but it's it's Europa League, so I mean he's gonna go without more than likely winning a an international trophy or a significant international trophy because they didn't win the Champions League. He more than likely isn't going to Boca, and then I know Libertadores, and I don't know how Galaxy is playing right now to see if they'll qualify for the CONCACAF Champions League. So if they don't do that, then it's more than likely he's going to end his career with no significant international trophy. Yeah, but no, I don't think that would hurt him. No. <laughs> no. It's like Zlatan is a cult, right? Like He has a cult following. He's one of those guys who... You know, like a like a rapper or somebody, a musician who didn't get the Grammys and didn't get all the awards, but yeah, you know, like the entire culture knows that that dude was the real deal, and I think that's what Zlatan is. Like we'll always respect dude. He's he's a beast. He's phenomenal. So uh, let's go ahead and go and wrap it up here on our last topic. Uh, and, I, and I just wanted to to bring this up to kind of see. Check the temperature, man. It's uh, it's not looking good for the other league and teams uh, who are supposed to be like the big dogs up there with PSG, the Monaco's, Lyon, and the Marseille. You know, and and we we've seen PSG lose some matches um this season. And for me personally, I think that speaks to the heightened level of just just intensity and just fervor that the other t- the mid level clubs. They're raising their level. So these PSG losing these matches, like people want everybody to to get fired after every loss, which is crazy to me. But I think what people aren't seeing is like, yo, they're not playing scrubs. Like they're not playing Mm -hmm. any scrubs, but Ligue 1 is not going to, it's not going to extend without Monaco, Lyon and Marseille, one of those clubs to step up and, and hold hold down what they're supposed to do as being the other big dog in the league. And you know, I think I believe Monaco lost yesterday. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm, uh, let me look that up. I'm looking up the standings. I would, let me look at. Yeah, no, they won. They won yesterday for nothing. Okay. They've been they've been on a little roll. They beat Nice and now Brest. They did tie with with Reims, and then they lost recently three to four. Close matchup to Marseille. So, but you know, the last two matches they've been putting they've together been. some points. Some points, okay. So, but but overall, they're you know they 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 got out the gate. Yeah, they got a. Yeah, they were in the relegation zone for a few weeks, but they've kind of <laughs> got in themselves out of that. So now they're back in the mid table with Leon. I yeah. think they're both of them have nine points. There's like a really big. There's I think there's a three way tie for or four way tie between Leon, Monaco, Strasbourg, and Toulouse, all with nine points. Okay, and then uh, Marseille tied today against Ren, one um, one. They didn't, you know, lack. It, they didn't look good. Um, yeah, their past three matches have all ended in draws. So draws. I mean, they've they've kind of gotten. I mean, they got they also came out slow out of the gate, but you know they're in fifth yeah. place with thirteen points, 
And, you know, they're they're one point behind Lille. They're three points behind Angers and Nantes, and then just five points away from from PSG. So and then they're gonna I think they're gonna play each other at the end of October, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then um, I, I, one thing I know, our friend uh, Rabita from Leon Offside, her tweets haven't been pleasant lately, which means Leon <laughs> aren't playing well. Uh, and I think more so than anything, that's the team where we expect them to 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 be not great, but like you know, you know, even in the match when they played us, that that wasn't a good Leon side that we faced. Um, had that been, you know, last year's Leon, we probably yeah, and they kind of they also drew with um, Zenit St. Petersburg, and I thought they would. Yeah. And if, if I'm not mistaken, there it was a home match. I got to double check that, but still, I thought that they would be able to pull out a W. Yeah, it's 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 you know it's one of those things you know where we talk about the farmers league and all that stuff, and I think you know we can talk about finances and the team having backings and all this stuff, but you know league again is is not PSG alone. You know obviously pundits and stuff like that for their talking points because they don't watch the league, all they know is PSG. But for you know overall, you need. The, the second, third, fourth teams to be a consistent, you know, Leon, Marseille, Monaco, Lille, you know, those type of teams. We need them to be up there and, you know, to, to play at a certain level for the for the respected entire league because they're pretty much a representation of the entire league from the outside looking in because they're yeah. usually the top seeds. So I, I think that's something to, to, to keep an eye on to see how they do. Um, but again, I think the mid level teams this season really stepped up their, 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 their level. Yeah. I, I, I've not, I have not seen the, the standings all week. So yeah. I was like kind of surprised that, I, that Angers and Nantes are the second and third best teams right now. Points wise. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then those are, those are the teams where it's like, you know, we used to dust them up, you know what I mean? Like yeah. mid level, lower level teams now but look where they're at. So <laughs> the only thing I don't like is that if they show up in Champions League they get embarrassed. Like Leo got embarrassed by I think it was an Ajax, three nothing, four nothing. Yeah. And yeah. it's that's just a black eye for the league. It's just like, okay, that's a good those are good stories, but we do you you do need the Leon, Monaco and Marseille to get their shit together because you don't want on um, you know, I'm pretty sure if you're league on off, you know the officials there. Yes, having Ange and Leo and all those good stories are good, but when they play against European teams at the Champions League level, to see them get embarrassed, it's, it's just like oh, that's a that's a black eye, not a black eye, but that's another shot, you know, towards our league. No, I agree. I agree. So we'll we'll keep an eye on that, man. Uh, but yeah, I think that's pretty much what we got today. Uh, where we at about an hour? <laughs> we yeah. try to make up for, for, for three, <laughs> for weeks, three yeah. weeks. Yeah, we've been uh, we've been um, away from y'all. But again, we appreciate it. Uh, everybody listening to the podcast and giving us the feedback and stuff like that. So uh, go ahead and close it out how we usually close it out what what's the craziest thing that you've seen in the past three weeks eddie uh the swift turnaround on eden hazard remember all this summer (laughs) and and last year and i don't know how long has this been going on but there's actual people that thought eden hazard was better than neymar and as we're seeing now that's that was never true that was i think the the chelsea fan people and just being part of the Premier League club, you they're able to turn you know turn down the the actual criticism because they're so loud. They I think some people do start believing because Premier League people are so loud. So now that he's in Real Madrid, he's been exposed a little bit. He, there are some people saying that he was out of shape. That you know you 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 make you make your dream move to your dream club, and you're not fit you know weight wise so it's just like it's it's delicious to 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 eat the i don't know what you want to call it not this humble pie but it's just see remember seeing all those tweets that people there's actual people that believe that 
Eden Hazard was better than Neymar, and now, you know, it's it's proving not to be the case. Neymar is just dragging PSG to victories. Meanwhile, Eden Hazard isn't, you know, dragging anybody to it's victory. Subbed off at sixty minutes in the yeah, there. yeah. So, <laughs> and yeah, that's, that's but it's funny that. is that both clubs that were interested in Neymar didn't want to pay PSG's price, and now it's just like maybe they should have try to sell some players to fund the Neymar purchase because it looks like both of them could definitely use Neymar because Barcelona, although they won, I think they won this past week weekend. Yeah, they've they've not been looking good. And Real Madrid, obviously, we saw against PSG. And then, yeah, they haven't been looking good either. Yeah, yeah, they drew the Madrid derby. They didn't. Uh, but that, that Atletico defense is no matter who's. I know Godin is gone. I think he's at Inter. Yeah. But it don't matter the way Simeone sets those those dudes up. But Thomas Partry, uh, one of my favorite midfielders. Like they're just they're they're like they're like the they're gonna be like the Clippers in the NBA with like Kawhi, Paul George. Um, what's the what's the other feisty guy? Uh, Patrick uh, Beverly. Pat Beverly. Yeah, like that. That's <laughs> that's how I look at Atletico. They're one of yeah. Those the only thing I don't like about Atletico is they can be too conservative, and like think that's what some yep. of the guys on PN Sports are saying. Like, dude, you you're playing in the biggest matchup, you know, against your arch rival, and you kind of just are happy with the draw. You're not trying to say, hey, let's go for the win. So yeah, but, that, but yeah, that's, that's the objective though. That's literally how Zemiani sets them up, and he has no shame. In his game, I don't, I, I don't, I don't mind it. Like it's, it was still a fascinating game to watch. Um, but yeah, now just to go back to on your on your hazard point, it, it's it's it is funny to to see that drop off where people like every week I would see a video or a tweet that says like a thread. It would be like a Twitter thread, or it yeah. would be like clips and be like, this is why he's better than Neymar, and. I don't know. Now that now it's just it's gone it's gone quiet. Well, going back to FIFA, though, we we're talking about FIFA. In in FIFA 20, he's the fourth ranked. He's ranked the fourth best player in the world, like <laughs> per FIFA. Right? It's Messi, Ronaldo, Neymar, and then it's Aiden Hazard. <laughs> and I think that's just nuts. I think Kevin De Bruyne is is that guy. I think he's right there with the Neymar. Um, Messi's and I think he's on that level, but yeah, they got they got Eden Hazard ranked, I think fourth best player on FIFA. So yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my craziest tweet that I saw, um, obviously I've been on the, the Italian league's neck all summer. The Serie A, they they've been disgusting. Um, and there's two tweets that I saw over the past three weeks. The first one. Uh, it was from the Guardian. It's um, as an Italian pundit was sacked for saying the only way to stop Romelu Lukaku is to give him banana. Mm-hmm. Like, dude said this on live TV, right? Um, and then just going back to the the Cagliari Ka- Ka- match where you know they were doing the the monkey chance to Lukaku when he was taking the penalty kicks, and we all saw it. We all heard it. And they, the Italian football came out and said Cagliari is going to avoid pun- or they're going to avoid punishment for racially abusing Romelu Lukaku. And then there's uh, there's another story that just came out. Uh, I think, you know, you read this. Uh, I didn't I don't think I really got a full grasp of the story. It has something to do with Marilyn Pjanic from from uh, Juve. Um, and it's like, yo, throw the entire league away, bro. Like nobody, nobody sees a problem with the entire Serie A and just the nastiness and how the fans are acting and how the board, like the the, the federation and the executives yeah. in that league, just don't give a shit about anything, and they're enabling this behavior. And it's like, yo, like this is this is normal to y'all, and it made me look at all Italians. Funny, I don't like to generalize, but it's like, like yo. Like this is this is this is really weird stuff and it's it's it shouldn't be going on um, just openly like this and there's nobody again holding anybody accountable so that's that's the craziest so thing to seen. to cut you off a little bit John um, the Pjanic um, Brescia I think that's how it's pronounced they received a suspended stand closure for fans racially abusing um, Pjanic they were calling him a gypsy um, mm-hmm. Zingaro or, or whatever that those are like the two 
main um, words that are being thrown to him, even though he's white and he's looking like them. <laughs> so even and they have a problem only, with white people. <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. So it's it's equally yeah. It's so they ban they they ban the the fans from coming into the stands for half a game. They, let's see. Italian Football Federation suspended. British was given a suspended. Uh, probably start. Oh, for one game. For one. For one game. game that's it. Yeah. Like, what? The, what the hell is that going to do? <laughs> like, what? Like, what is? They're gonna, gonna come do? back and come back and still yell and racial same shit again. And it's just gonna it's be gonna worse happen. when it's a black player, and that's it. All right. And it's, it's gonna happen. So yeah, that's that's the nastiest thing I've I've been seeing over really all summer. Just Italian football. There's is yeah we gotta we gotta do something about that man but uh, they gotta throw that yeah. whole league away right now yeah throw it away bro burn it i Put think it. i know this is way too extreme but if i'm uefa i would say hey your champions league spots we're gonna only give you one maybe two and that's it the rest are gonna yeah. we're gonna spread them out until that's stuff like that because they're that's affecting their pocket like that's yeah, they, you know much different no but that's a starting point that's something even though it's not gonna fix the problem entirely but Things of that nature, where obviously the only way people pay attention is when they're. Or yeah, when they're yeah, when clubs. That's the only way they'll they'll do something is when money's being taken out of their pocket. Exactly. Exactly. So that's that's that you. That's a good point you bring up. So, you know, but again, we're we're talking about UEFA here. We're talking about FIFA. <laughs> you know, the story that just came out with Yuli Onis, uh talking about if. If um, the German and the Germany international team, if they put Mark Andre Ter Stegen in front of Manuel Noor, he's gonna block all his players, all the oh. Euro- <laughs> Bayern players from playing. Like, what the hell is this shit? Like, what? Like, what? What is this elitist uh, privilege that these people have? And these are the these are the executives. These are the mm-hmm. higher ups that we're supposed to be expecting to hold people accountable and they are here maneuvering like children and being extremely petty it's like yeah. there's it's like there's no hope <laughs> like there's no hope bro but yeah so we're gonna uh, i think that's that's pretty much it right yeah uh, we, that's, that's pretty coming. much yeah yeah again yeah we appreciate y'all for listening to 24th and park uh rate us review us subscribe to the youtube or on youtube uh the phg talking uh talk podcast network uh we're in all the um the wherever you listen to your podcast uh, again rate us review us leave us five stars and all that good stuff man and uh, we appreciate y'all for listening we'll talk to y'all later <laughs>